everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Did Shakespeare. My name is Cassidy Cash. One of the most iconic things about England is the fact that it rains so much. In fact, on my last trip to Stratford-upon-Avon, which was also my first trip to Stratford-upon-Avon, me and my traveling partner figured out very quickly that you have to carry an umbrella with you everywhere because the only sure thing about the English weather is that it is going to rain. You just have no idea when. So it got me thinking, for William Shakespeare, when he was walking around, did Shakespeare carry an umbrella? When I went diving into the history of the umbrella, it was really interesting to take a look at this evolution of the practicality of protecting yourself from the rain, particularly in London, England, where it rains a good deal. It turns out, Shakespeare probably didn't have an umbrella. It was promising at first because the Oxford English Dictionary does date the word fennel, which is the origin of the word umbrella, exactly how fennel becomes umbrella. I will link you to the linguistic evolution there of the word in the show notes for today's episode, but that word dates to the 16th century. The Oxford English Dictionary records only one instance of the word umbrella in the 16th century, it is a German travel log, and that's the only place that it shows up. So this bit of history, along with some others, has most historians believing that the umbrella was around during Shakespeare's lifetime, but it wasn't in popular use. By the 16th century, umbrellas were a popular fashion item. They were called parasols, and women used them a lot. Interestingly, they were popular in religious rites. The Pope would carry around an umbrella as part of the official regalia of the Pope. Not Catholic, so I hope I'm not messing up the terminology there, but basically there was a great deal of ceremony and particular artifacts that you carried around for the Pope, and an umbrella was part of that. So for people like William Shakespeare, the umbrella would have been associated either with a high-class woman who had a servant carrying the umbrella or parasol for her, or with someone like the Pope. It was not a common item, and there are historical records of if a man were to have carried an umbrella, he would have been severely ridiculed for this choice. So this wouldn't have been something Shakespeare would have had. The parasol was really popular in France. Catherine de' Medici had one that she carried when she married the Duke of Orleans. And actually, Mary Queen of Scots, the mother of James I of England, she had a famous parasol, which was this bright red silk and had this fancy gold tassels all around it. And so she carried that around. I'm sure that was well known for Shakespeare's lifetime as well. It was kind of a very ostentatious item to possess. So best I can tell in the history of umbrellas, it really didn't become something popular for defending against the rain until after the death of William Shakespeare in the latter part of the 17th century. So what did Shakespeare do to protect against the rain? Well, even though he didn't carry around an umbrella, there were ways that he could use to protect against the rain when he had to be outside or when he was traveling. Obviously, the first mode of defense was to go indoors to get out of the rain or to find some kind of covering. The second defense was actually the clothing that was worn during the 16th century. A lot of the clothing items William Shakespeare would have worn were made of things like flax, which naturally repel the wet, damp air and the rain and the moisture. And so actually how he was dressed would have been a greater defense against the weather than what we're used to in our clothing today. Lastly, there were carriages in the 16th century for getting around. No, I'm sorry, in the 17th century for getting around. These didn't arrive in England popularly until around 1605, but there were carriages that would carry people around the city a lot like taxis. It was relatively expensive, but by that time in his life, William Shakespeare would have had the status and income to hire one of these to get around. We do have a diary entry from Samuel Pepys, who says he was not wanting to be seen riding around in the lower status kind of carriage and instead hired a proper coach with a footman and everything to get around because he wanted to be seen more upper class. So not only were there carriages for getting around, but there were different kinds. There was the common one and then the formal coach. 
It's worth noting that that record from Samuel Pepys did happen in 1667. So that's after the life of William Shakespeare that they had this conundrum between what kind of carriage you would like to have. But during the life of William Shakespeare, there were carriages that protected travelers from the rain that Shakespeare could have hired getting around London or even going from London to Stratford-upon-Avon. We have no evidence of what or even if Shakespeare made this choice, but it was available to him as a way to avoid the rain. Lastly, there was a kind of coat, and I can spell it, but I'm not sure I know how to pronounce it. It's either a surtout or surtout, depending on how you want to pronounce this word. I studied French for several years, so to me it looks like surtout, but I don't know how the English said it, but it was basically a trench coat. It's this long outer coat that you could wear. A lot of men wore it during William Shakespeare's lifetime to protect them against the rain. So that's it for this week. That's the history of umbrellas and how William Shakespeare would have protected himself against the rain in the classic English weather that has a lot of it. Thank you for being here this week. I'm Cassidy Cash. I hope you enjoyed this history of William Shakespeare. If you like this episode and you like learning about the history of 16th to 17th century England, please hit the subscribe button. There's a little notification bell there that you can click that'll make sure you get notified by YouTube every time we launch a new episode. If you'd like direct links to our podcast episode we have every Monday called That Shakespeare Life or direct links to these episodes we do every Saturday, you can sign up to join our email list at CassidyCash.com. You guys get all of the good stuff, links to everything right when it's available, as well as free artwork once a month. Thank you for being here. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.